In February 2021, Bangladesh hit a significant milestone, meeting all three criteria for graduating from a least developed country, or LDC, to a developing country, an achievement it replicated since 2018. The United Nations is looking at 2026 as Bangladesh's graduation year, patting the nation on the back for its journey since gaining independence in 1971. Despite contending with natural disasters, tough conditions, and widespread corruption, Bangladesh has become a poster child for economic and social progress, earning labels like Development Miracle or Development Labyrinth. It's not just a bourgeoisie developing market economy. The country has achieved self-sufficiency in food production for its 171 million people, with substantial strides in reducing poverty and elevating living standards. However, the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent Russia's war in Ukraine have interrupted Bangladesh's economic miracle. Soaring energy and food prices pulled a prank, blowing up the import bill and forcing the government to go knocking on doors, including the International Monetary Funds, asking for some financial TLC. In this video, we'll be talking about the factors leading up to the end of Bangladesh's economic miracle. What are your thoughts on this issue? Let us know down below with some facts. Bangladesh is the star of brand nations, grabbing the fastest growing title on the global stage. Last year, its brand value shot up like a rocket. Right behind are Uzbekistan, 32%, Azerbaijan, 30%, UAE, 24%, and Georgia, 23%. In South Asia, it's playing second fiddle to India, leaving Pakistan in the dust by more than double and making Sri Lanka's brand value look like a drop in the ocean, ten times over to be exact. So, why the spotlight on Bangladesh? Think of increasing consumer spending, an emerging young workforce, an economy made of steel, a digital revolution happening, increasing government spending, and rapid private sector investment growth, to mention a few. In the initial years, government expenditure and private sector investment constituted 85% and 15% of total investment, respectively, evolving to a paradigm shift with private sector investment reaching 87% during the formulation of the eighth five-year plan. What makes Bangladesh's economic story even more fascinating is its resilience. Remember the global financial crisis? When the world was reeling from the 2007-2009 financial crisis, Bangladesh strutted its stuff with a growth rate of 5.5%, beating the average of big players like India, Indonesia, and the whole global stage. And then COVID-19 hit. But Bangladesh pulled a rabbit out of its hat with a growth rate of 3.4%, while others were drowning in negatives. The last 10 years weren't luck, they were strategy. Bangladesh waved goodbye to its agriculture-heavy past, with more than half the GDP coming from farms. Now, it's all about the industry, making up a solid 35% of the GDP while agriculture contributes only 15%, making up a solid 35% of the GDP, while agriculture contributes only 12%. But, and there's always a but, even a country with a population of 171 million can't dodge the global economic slowdown. Bangladesh's economic health relies largely on exports, remittances, and fuel prices. Lately, they've all taken a hit. Let's take a quick peek at how these crucial sources have been affected. The ready-made garment industry is the powerhouse of Bangladesh's economy responsible for over 80% of the country's exports and playing an increasingly pivotal role on the global stage. Even the government has big dreams, forecasting that Bangladeshi factories will be churning out 10% of the world's apparel by 2025. However, when COVID-19 struck, it hit Bangladesh's garment industry hard. Factories closed and about 1 million workers, around a, around a quarter of the workforce, found themselves unemployed, struggling to make ends meet. 2021 brought some relief as spending in the West picked up and factory orders in Bangladesh slowly began to recover, reaching a peak in June 2022, with a record-breaking monthly export value of over $4 billion in apparel. However, this upward trajectory was short-lived. 
with orders plummeting by 30% just a month later, exacerbated by global inflation. By September, the export scene was in a slump, partially thanks to Europe dealing with its own recession. The consequences of this decline are palpable. When exports dip, it's not just about numbers. Workers who hustle hard for their wages and clock in overtime suddenly find it tough to keep up with the rising inflation. On top of that, less money from exports means Bangladesh is tightening its belt when it comes to importing fuel as prices increase. Energy is the lifeblood of economic activities, keeping things ticking along smoothly, and Bangladesh's power grid, relying partially on imported fuel, is currently navigating challenges intensified by the increased costs post-Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This has led to a need for some good old rationing. Since around July 2022, Bangladesh has been dealing with more frequent episodes of load shedding, which is causing a problem for the manufacturing and business folks. These manufacturing operations are like energy hawks, relying heavily on a steady power supply. But with the current energy shortfall, the industrial sector is feeling the pinch, and not in a good way. Load shedding isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's throwing a wrench into manufacturing operations, messing with production and hiking up operational costs. And you can bet your bottom dollar is affecting the country's competitiveness, both in our neck of the woods and on the global stage. The fallout isn't just financial, it's affecting society too. Why Now, why does this matter? The direct hit comes from disrupted production, increased production costs, and goods going bad. Businesses are also shelling out big bucks for backup energy, like private diesel generators for industries and small battery storage devices for homes. These alternatives are way pricier than regular grid-supplied energy, piling on extra costs for businesses already dealing with a tricky energy situation. In August 2022, the government decided the budget just couldn't handle the hospitality anymore. So, in a week, they hoisted up the prices of gasoline, diesel, and kerosene by over 50%. The media called it the biggest bump since Bangladesh became a thing in 1971. Buses and taxis adjusted their price tags overnight, and suddenly, grocery bills got a bit more ambitious. The populace's response was swift, with thousands taking to the streets in protest. Bangladesh gets a decent chunk of its cash flow from the 13 million Bangladeshis living abroad. These people, many of whom are probably your aunties, uncles, or distant cousins, regularly wire money back home. In 2021, the remittances reached a record-breaking $22.07 billion. However, in the summer of 2022, there was a notable decline, with remittances dropping by more than 15%. Faria Nahim, an economist at the International Growth Center and the London School of Economics, suggested that part of the reason for this decline could be the notable strength of the US dollar. This strength means that someone abroad needs to send less money to achieve the same amount in Bangladeshi currency. In January 2023, Bangladesh secured a $4.7 billion loan from the IMF, the first among three South Asian countries that applied for it last year. It's a win for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, especially with the general election around the corner. The cash injection is a lifeline for Bangladesh, dealing with a ballooning current account deficit, a drooping Taka currency, and a dip in foreign exchange reserves. Last year, Bangladesh also knocked on the doors of the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, seeking $2 billion to shore up its foreign exchange reserves. Seeking $2 billion to shore up its foreign exchange reserves. The IMF, though, sounded the alarm on May 7, 2023, flagging risks to Bangladesh's economy. They pointed fingers at persistent inflationary pressures, elevated volatility of global financial conditions, and a slowdown in major advanced trading partners. But despite the gloomy outlook, Bangladesh already pocketed $476 million in the first installment and another $680 million in the second installment on December 13, 2023. 
The Bangladesh government says that grabbing that IMF loan is like a safety net, a precautionary move to sort out economic issues before things start going south. But let's be real. It's also possible that the shrinking foreign currency reserves and strong inflationary pressures pushed Hasina's administration to seek a $4.7 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund. Bangladesh is a case study of how everything in the world economy is tied together. And when things slow down globally, the impact hits the poorer countries the hardest. Even those considered economic miracles aren't exempt from the struggles. Right now, Bangladesh is dealing with some political unrest that's making its already shaky economy even shakier, adding to the stress caused by the global mess with COVID-19 and the Ukraine situation. Thanks to the ongoing road rail waterway blockade led by the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, or BNP, and its buddies, supply chains are all messed up. According to the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FBCCI, Bangladesh is bleeding out 65 billion takas, or $588 million, a day. It's a real headache, and it just highlights the tough spot Bangladesh is in, needing some serious stability and smart solutions to ride out these rough times. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thought-provoking content.